Hey, we're live. It's the uh, 8th of June. It's a Thursday. Hope everybody's doing well. I hope all our friends on the East Coast and now in the Midwest and up in Canada are doing okay. I know you've seen, I'm looking at my phone now so I can quote myself exactly. This horrendous weather here, it looks like a haze. Looks like it's about to rain or something, which of course it's not. The air quality in Baltimore is 221. Usually it's like 30. I mean, it's kind of scary. New York is 176. We're worse than New York. Um, it's just amazing. Um, these fires in Canada coming down. As you know, global warming is an issue, and it just shows you how global warming, how, how difficult it is to measure the exact problems of global warming because you know, Canada's having a problem because it's very dry. So they having a lot of forest fires from the East Coast to the West Coast. And then because they have forest fires, all of that soot and pollution and everything else, because of the wind currents coming down are blowing all over where New York was the most polluted city in the world yesterday. My grandchildren are up in New York and, you know, school is no outside activities. You're wearing a mask, getting to and from the car. You're staying inside. I think it's due to break sometime later today and shortly by tomorrow. So that's hopeful, but it does show that um, global warming, whether you think about it or not, is something that affects you. The answer it does, because other people's problems thousands of miles away are going to affect you. And so... Um, we're in this together. Now, we're not political, so I'm not going to go on about that, but I hope everybody's doing okay. And, you know, these things are kind of scary. Again, hopefully it's not going to stay for long, and it shouldn't stay for just more than a day or so. Um, today, we're going to speak about CT of small bowel tumors. It's a very important topic. Small bowel tumors are always one of the challenges because um, often the history doesn't come up small bowel tumor. It comes up abdominal pain, weight loss low hematocrit, low hemoglobin. Things there in the small bowel can present acutely into susception, small bowel obstruction, active bleed, or it can be more chronic, vague abdominal pain, weight loss. Small bowel tumors have a range of appearances and a range of diagnoses. They can be benign, polyps, lipomas. Okay, once in a while, lipoma will intercept. Otherwise, they're, let's not worry about those. But on the malignant side of things, we worry. We talk about adenocarcinoma. We talk about lymphoma. We talk about gastrointestinal stromal tumors or GIST tumors. We talk about carcinoid tumors. We talk about metastasis. And of course, there's a range of other tumors, but those are the big guys. Now, in terms of quality of care, the most important thing for you is to find the tumor, find the mass, whether you can get the differential diagnosis right or not isn't probably as critical because in most cases it's either being biopsied or it's coming out. You have things that can be confused. I showed a case a couple of weeks ago of ectopic pancreatic tissue with a duodenum looking exactly like a polypoid lesion, looking like a tumor. So you can be fooled. But that's why they have biopsies. Um, it is a challenge. Now, things about tumors. Some tumors are more common proximal, adenocarcinoma, proximal, lymphoma distal, carcinoid tumors distal. Some tumors grow in the lumen. Think about um, carcinoid. Some grow exophytic. Think about just tumors. Some are infiltrative. Think adeno, think lymphoma. Some are bulkier. Think lymphoma. Some tumors have adenopathy. Lymphoma is kind of the good one with the sandwich sign, though adenocarcinoma can have spread into nodes. Almost anything can involve the liver. Um, just tumors, the Mets in the liver are often cystic. Carcinoid, because of the neuroendocrine tumor, the Mets are often vascular, hypervascular, that is. So there's a range of appearances. With carcinoid tumors in the bowel, we often see a mass in the mesentery. So we look carefully at the mesentery always, because there could be nodes there or other secondary signs, but one of the best signs is a mass in the mesentery with desmoplastic reaction, and that's kind of classic for the most part for carcinoid. You can see mass in the mesentery from sclerosing mesenteritis. They're 70% calcified, and truthfully, carcinoid can be almost 
as frequently calcified. But with sclerosing mesenteritis, as opposed to carcinoid, you do not have that desmoplastic reaction. Sometimes with carcinoids, the primary tumor in the bowel is hard to see. So that can be somewhat challenging because it's often small. It also can be multiple. So satisfaction of search, C1, keep looking. Adenocarcinoma, commonly duodenum, can be polypoid, can be bulky, can be infiltrative, can cause obstruction. Lymphoma and adeno overlap a lot, though lymphoma tends to be bulkier. The lymphoma has larger nodes, and the nodes are typically down into the mesentery. Just tumors can grow exophytic. When they're small, it's easier to tell. When they're big, they're so bulky. Uh, it's interesting, even the large just tumors typically do not obstruct. They can present with GI bleeding, and particularly the smaller ones. The smaller ones tend to be vascular. The larger ones tend to be relatively hypovascular, but it's one of the tumors we do see, and it's a great mimicker of other processes. I should also mention metastasis. Mets can occur, think of things like um, melanoma would be the classic one, or renal cell carcinoma. Mets from renal cell, since 90% of renal cells are clear cell, Mets are typically hypervascular. Mets from melanoma can be somewhat vascular, but typically aren't. They commonly cause intersusceptions. Melanoma can be large, bulky lesions in the duodenum or smaller lesions in distal small bowel causing obstruction. There's a range of appearances. I do think that when you're looking for small bowel tumors, dual phase imaging is critical with IV contrast. Reviewing the images in coronal plane becomes very critical, far beyond just the axial, and 3D imaging can be very valuable. Look for transitions in bowel. Small bowel tumors can intersuscept, including intermittent intersusceptions, which can reduce. They also can bleed. Sometimes initial presentation, particularly a gist or carcinoid even, would be GI bleeding. We do a dual phase GI bleed study and you see an enhancing lesion, carcinoid versus gist tumor, exophytic, gist, intraluminal, carcinoid. But there is some overlap there as well. Now we also talk about other things in the small bowel patients with multiple lesions like poots Jaegers and some of the polyposis syndromes. There you see lots of lesions. There's lots of carpeting. And many of them are malignant. But again, the history and the other findings, including the stomach and colon, will make life easier. I think small bowel CT is a critical study. Remember, capsule endoscopy was supposed to replace CT. Capsule endoscopy often misses lesions, can be problematic if it gets obstructed because of a mass and you have to surgically remove it. And it takes 50,000 or 60,000 images, so very easy to miss it because there are way too many images, as we know. So CT is the study of choice in looking at GI bleeding, looking at small bowel obstruction, looking for transition points for bowel obstruction, whether it's adhesions, whether it's a mass, all those things can be easily recognized. So when we talk about small bowel tumors, it's one of the challenges of CT. Again, dual phase acquisition, fast injection, review of axial and coronal images, and 3D, if you can do it, are very valuable. Look for subtle findings, masses, transition points. Look for causes of, of a perfusion change where portions of the bowel are less than or better than others. That can be a sign of a lot of things but a tumor can be one of them. And with that, I wish you good luck in finding all of those small bowel tumors. And have a great day, everybody.